Now, as a photographer, your files are generally more valuable to you than the average Mac user. Most people, if they have a hard drive failure or their computer is stolen or something like that, you know, they've maybe lost a few documents. Perhaps they've had their documents in, in um, Dropbox, so it's not really a big problem to them. But for a photographer, especially if it's your livelihood, if it's your job, your files are far more valuable to you. And so backups are extremely important. And the question is, what is a good backup system that you can implement that doesn't require a lot of additional steps? You don't want to be working and having to constantly backup, you know, that requires additional work to backup. You want it to do it in the background. You want it to be seamless and you want it to be safe and reliable. And there are a few options out there, depending on cost and depending on your situation, some might be more feasible than others. Now, we have the basic setup where people tend to have one external hard drive. So in my case, I have here attached to my Mac, I have two external hard drives, just two standard separate external hard drives. And you can have Time Machine, for example, just set up and backing up your entire Mac to the second hard drive. That's great. Time Machine does a great job of that. It backs up every hour and it gives you the option to back up when you want on demand. And it does. It creates a perfect duplicate of your whole hard drive. And if that hard drive fails, you're good. You've got an additional backup. But I find when I'm working, I don't like Time Machine running in the background, copying files. Especially if I'm editing, there's a whole bunch of raw images I, I plan on deleting because I'm busy going through this project. I don't want Time Machine backing that up and slowing down my hard drive. So I don't find Time Machine to be very effective in my workflow. But it is a good option for those of you who are just starting out and or perhaps your budget's low. Time Machine's fantastic. It's free. It comes with your Mac. Definitely, by all means, use it. But... If you start getting more advanced, perhaps you're earning an income from photography, so you have a little bit more money to, to put towards it, we start getting towards more technical topics. Now, some of you may have heard about or have heard of the word redundancy. Most of you probably haven't heard of it. But basically, redundancy is having a storage option that if your hard drive fails, you don't lose your information. That's basically what it means. And so ideally, you want to have something that you can store your photos on. So as soon as you import them, like your hard drive, as soon as you import your photos to it, you want to feel safe knowing that if, if a hard drive fails, you're not going to lose that information. How do you do that? Well, typically there is the old fashioned way of creating raids. I'm not even going to go into detail about what they are. You can Google it if you want. It's R-A-I-D, a raid system. And they do work, but they do have a lot of technical setup and a lot of technical know-how that needs to go into it. But a very popular alternative, a very popular option for photographers and video editors today is called Drobo. Now, I'm not paid to advertise this. In fact, I haven't even been able to get my hands on one yet. But I am mentioning it because of in my research, as I've been reading up on it, it sounds like a excellent option for photographers and video editors. I definitely plan on getting my hands on one and as soon as I do I will update this tutorial with my findings and I will then send a new link to all of you. But for now I just want to show you the website. It's drobo.com and basically the website's very self-explanatory, very easy to, to, to view. But basically what Drobo is, is it's just a, a little box I'm going to see if I can find a photo. Here we see a Drobo. It's a box that you plug into your Mac, you plug into the wall, and it has some hard drive bays. So you can put in up to four hard drives into this Drobo. And on your computer, on your Mac, it will look like one drive. So it will take the storage of each of these four hard drives, and it will add them together, and it will give you one large hard drive on your Mac. But what Drobo offers is that if one of these drives fails, then you won't lose any information. You can simply pull out that hard drive. You can carry on working while you pull it out, and you can then just plug in a new one, 
and Drobo will then automatically start rebuilding the information and you won't lose any files and you also won't lose any time because you can continue working even when one hard drive fails. But if two hard drive fails, then you could lose some information. It depends on the model of Drobo that you purchase. I don't want to get into too much detail, but if you go on the website, you can read up about it. But it really looks like a great, great option. It offers redundancy, as I said. So if a drive fails, you don't lose your, your data. And it's quick enough that you can edit your photos directly off your Drobo. So you can import them onto your Drobo and have your aperture library on your Drobo. And while you're working, your files are safe and backed up. So that is one great option of how to store your files. I wouldn't recommend it as your only backup. I would still recommend having an alternative hard drive, a second hard drive where you back up everything as a clone. But in terms of redundancy, it's a really, really great option. And then thirdly, the other option that I want to mention, and this depends on whether or not you have a really good internet connection, but it is online backups. And the great thing about online backups is that they're off-site, meaning if anything happens at your home, perhaps you have a fire. We Obviously, we don't want that to happen. We don't like to think about things like that. But if you have a fire, you lose your Mac. You also lose your Drobo, for example, that's connected to it. You have no backups of those files. And so you'll often hear people speaking about off-site backups. And you might want to have two Drobos, have one at home that you work on and then make a copy of it and then take that Drobo, for example, to work with you or to a friend's house and ask them to keep it for you. That is an option for an off-site backup. But online backups are really nice because you can just do it from your, your chair. You can just let it back up overnight. But it only really works if you have a good internet connection because if it's not quick enough, then you'll find that the backup is too slow that it doesn't even it never actually catches up to your work but for those of you who are considering online backups and would like to look at it i'd like to suggest crashplan.com again they have not paid me for this at all they don't even know that i'm doing this but i'm just recommending their product because it's very good i use it and basically you can let me just find the page uh, where it shows the prices Let's see, compare. You can pay for $49 a year. Well, actually, it's so buy now. So you can pay as low as $150 a month if you only want 10 gigs online. But for most of us, 10 gigs will go very quick. The unlimited option is the one that is very interesting. If you buy for three years, if you pay for three years up front, it'll end up costing you only $3 a month and you can back up unlimited files to their servers. And that's, that's really cool. Uh, you can back up, you can just keep going. It doesn't really matter how much files you use and you have an offsite backup permanently. And they have a great utility crash plan software that you can install and you can customize your backups. You can choose when you want them to run. You can specify which folders you want to back up. It's, it's really just an exceptional product. And so for those of you who think online backups are an option, then I definitely think you should come and have a look at Crash Plan. As a photographer, there are a variety of reasons why you may need to work with multiple libraries from time to time. And I think the biggest reason or the most common reason why people do is when traveling. And so what often happens is photographers sometimes have a portable workstation like a laptop that they don't really use for primarily for editing, but they use it more for when they're traveling on the road so they can import photos off their camera and they can continue taking more shoots so that they can free up their camera's flash memory but they don't intend on really doing all of the editing on the laptop. Now, photographers can easily, over the course of, let's say, 10 years, have terabytes of photos. And most laptops don't have such large storage. 
So you don't want to be carrying your primary library with you wherever you go, the, the library that has all of your completed projects. So the logical thing to do is to create a new library and then when you get home, just move it across to your workstation like your iMac where you have your main library and you have a lot more storage. Now some of you perhaps only work with one Mac like a laptop and that's totally fine. You may not have as much need to have multiple libraries but you'll probably still find this interesting and perhaps in future this will benefit you. But for those of you who do work on multiple Macs for different reasons or perhaps you do correspondence work and you work with other photographers and you're sharing iTunes libraries, this will come in really handy. And so what we can do, let's just look at my library at the moment. Let's just say this is my main library. So in fact, I think what I want to do is, I want to see if I can rename. Okay, so I, I'm going to just close Aperture. And I'm going to go to my Pictures folder. And my Aperture library, I'm going to rename that to Master Aperture Library. So that's my main Aperture Library. And now I'll just double click that to open it again. And I'm also going to delete these other libraries that I have to show you from scratch how it's done. So I have one library and it's my main Aperture Library. But now what I want to do is I'm about to leave for the road. And let's say I move to my laptop. And on my laptop I don't have any photos. I don't have this master library. I go to Aperture. I say File. I say Switch to Library. I can go other new and I can just create a new one. So let's say on my laptop I want to call this my either you want to have one library that you use repetitively or perhaps you want to create a new library for every different trip that you take which I think is an, a good option because you can identify the different libraries and, and keep the photo separate. So I'll call this 2011-10 and I'll label it according to the trip. So let's say I'm going on a trip and I'm about to take some landscape photos. I'll call it landscape trip. So now it's very easy for me to, ad to identify what this library is for and I'll say create. So now on my laptop as I'm about to leave for my trip I have a brand new library that is empty. There's no photos in it. It's fresh and it's ready to go. So now while I'm on my trip I start taking photos and I start importing photos. So I will bring in, I'll go File Import. And in your case, you'll very likely have a camera. And so you'll just import the photos from your camera. I'm just going to import photos from my Mac. So I've just got four photos on my desktop, just as an example. And I'll click Import. And it says import completed. So I'll say, okay, so now I have my imported photos. And don't worry about the details of importing photos. We're going to discuss that in the next chapter. But for now, I just want to discuss the multiple libraries. So now I have these photos and I'm starting to add more and more as the trip continues. And now the trip's over. So I've got these photos and perhaps I've done a little bit of basic editing. And so now when I get home, I want to merge these with my master library. Well, that's really easy. So I'll go switch to library. Or in fact, let's, let's just rethink this. I'll, I'll then take my, in my pictures folder, I will go to my landscape library that I made on my laptop. I will then copy it to my desktop machine so that they're in the same, they're in the same folder. And now on my desktop machine, I open my master library. So in this case, I'll just quickly switch back. So now this is my master library. And I go file. And I can say import library project. So I'll just import library project. And I'll browse to this 2011 trip, landscape trip library. And I just say import. And you see it says merging library. And all it does is it brings in all the information from that new library and it adds it to my master library. And you'll see that it adds this untitled folder because I didn't name it properly. But this was just for the sake of the example. And you see how my master library now has a new project titled according to what I titled it. In my case, I didn't give it a proper name. So it's just a very quick ex example. But what you, you can clearly see that it's very nice. You can work with multiple libraries 
And it's not like you, you're stuck now with these separate libraries and it's a big mission to bring them together. You can very easily merge them at a later stage and keep one master library. And the other thing you can do is you can select a project. So let's say I want, let's say this project gets very large or I'm about to leave for a trip, same example, and I want to take this project with me because it's perhaps a similar trip. I can select that project and I can say file and I can say export and I can say export project as a new library. So I'll check that and then I'll export it and by default, by default it'll title it according to the project title which is great. And you can also choose to consolidate masters into the exported library which you want to do. So I'll say export library and it'll export it you see at the bottom it's busy and then it says export complete and it doesn't remove the the library from your master library it just exported it to a new one and now if I go to my pictures folder I have a new library 2010 08 New York and I can then copy that to my laptop I can go on my trip I can start adding more photos to it and then I can import it back into my master library again even though the the project is still there and it will just merge the new photos so it's really powerful and I, I definitely encourage you if you do a lot of traveling or you work on a lot of different workstations to start incorporating this into your workflow you'll find that it makes life really easy and it makes managing your photos a lot easier and on that note we'll end here that's all for this Apple Champ tutorial see you next time